Hi guys, it's France. Welcome to this video I made especially for Lindy Stem Gang. For this project I started with a tiny cardboard suitcase and a piece of cut and dry from which I took the white part away and then gave it the exact shape so that it would fit inside the suitcase. And I also want to include that little music mechanism inside my suitcase. Now it has a lever on the side for which I need to make a hole in the suitcase so that it can um, stick out of the suitcase. So this is what I'm doing right now. I made some, mark, uh, some marks using a pencil and now using my cutter I have to make a hole on both the bottom and the top of the suitcase. At this point I had to remind myself that a craft sheet is not a cutting mat and luckily for me I remembered before I cut inside my craft sheet. So now, now that my uh, music mechanism fits inside and can stick out and the lever can stick out of the suitcase, I'm taking some elements of a computer motherboard that I want to use as well for the inside of my suitcase. I'm looking for a grungy industrial rusted finish everything that i like so using my tweezers i'm taking off some parts that i would like to use now i want to give as i said um, a rusty industrial finish to it all so i need to make a bottom on my um, cut and dry that doesn't look as smooth as this one so I'm using extra coarse pumice gel from Golden to which I'm mixing some Magical from Lindy Stem Gang and I'm adding quite a lot of powder because I want to make sure that I have a deep and rich color uh, all the way through a um, thick layer of my gel that I will be putting on um, on my piece of cut and dry, sorry. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but I made some marks on my piece of cut and dry where the music mechanism will be uh, using a pencil and a pointy tool so that I know that I don't have to put gel on that part. Otherwise, my music mechanism won't fit exactly through the holes that I made in my suitcase anymore. So going all around the, the marks, I'm adding a very thick layer of the colorized pumice gel. First I'm checking that my make mechanism still fits in the opening that I left for it and now I can leave it to dry. Now to colorize uh, the suitcase I'm using Lindy Stam Gang Flat Shot and this has been mixed with a two third of clear gesso and one third of acrylic glazing liquid. Now to apply the paint I want to have it in a very very thin layer so I'm using a piece of cut and dry starting with the lightest of the two colors applying it almost everywhere but not completely everywhere and then using the same sponge without cleaning it I will go in the darker color and add some darker shadings to it in the same way not applying it everywhere but just in a random spots. I used a baby wipe to clean the handle of the suitcase to keep as much paint away from it as I could and then using a paintbrush I'm going inside the suitcase in the folds um, as my cut and dry piece is too thick to really go down um, all the way to in, into the folds.
Now that the paint is dried, I can add some stamping and I'm doing so using my French journal page um, that I designed for Stampatique and also my design cube. I'm stamping both using archival ink and this is the coffee archival ink and then heat setting it with my uh, heat gun. I'm doing the same, adding some same uh, stamping accents all around the suitcase. Not looking for a perfect stamping, just some little accents. And then using the same archival ink, I'm adding a bit of a distressed look on the edges. Now before heat setting that archival ink, I'm using a baby wipe to make it even more distressed. Um, this will take part of the ink away or at least blend it just a tiny bit and make it look less harsh. And now I'm doing the same with black archival ink, but um, I'm, I'm not insisting as much as I did with uh, the coffee archival ink. And then again using a baby wipe to blend it just slightly and then heat setting it to make sure it won't move anymore. This is diluted magical powder uh, to which I just added some water um, and I'm using it to add some splatters on the suitcase. Now when I'm taking the excess ink away, it looks like I'm taking all the ink Away, but that's just because the camera isn't picking uh, the splatters up. But there are some splatters on the suitcase. And doing the same for the inside of the suitcase. Again, going in with archival ink and a baby wipe, adding some splatters. And by the way, this is the uh, Cattail Copper Brown Magical Powder that I diluted. And then using some Starburst, this is the Time Travel Teal color that I'm applying using a paintbrush then spraying some extra water just to make the folds look a little um, darker, a little, uh, have to have a little more of a deep blue in the folds. And I'm not using a baby wipe for this, I'm using a dry cloth to dab the excess ink away. Then using only um, the foam of my blending tool, I'm going back in with Coffee Archival Ink, again to give it a very distressed look. Now my Pumice Gel Medium isn't completely dried, it's let's say halfway dried, but I need to get some elements in place before it's completely dried, otherwise I will have a hard time having them stay in place. So first thing I'm adhering to the base is the music mechanical system and I'm simply using brads. So I, I made some holes through the cut and dry foam and now just using brads I'm um, sticking it in place. And now I'm pushing the gel medium as much as I can against um, that little mechanical system. Now I'm using the fact that the um, pumice gel is still wet to shape it and to force the elements in place. After all it is a mixture of gel medium with pumice um, uh, in it. I'm trying to force it to try in the shape of the elements that I put into it. Again going in with some flat shot that I mixed up in the same way as I did with the blue ones. And no, it's not completely dried yet, but that's okay. I'm going in with that lighter color on top of uh, the base. And this is just the first layer of many, many, many others. Still working my way around for that first layer of color. And I'm also adding it on the little um, elements that I took from the motherboard 
to blend everything together and to give it a very old, um, grungy, rusted look. As you can see, I just keep going around and around and around and adding more, drying in between here and there and adding more and more and more of that same um, color. It's just building up layers um, so that I can go to the next step. Now I left it to dry overnight to make sure that uh, the pumice gel as well as the paint would be completely dried before going to the next step. But first I had to add it a bit more of the same paint. So first I want to check if the rusted elements that I want to add still work with the background that I had in mind and it does. So I can add some accents of another uh, flat shot color. But with this color, I'm just adding some highlights here and there. I'm not painting the complete surface. So I'm accentuating some pieces of the metallics that are sticking out or some pieces from the motherboard that I used. I left it to dry completely and then I went in with sanding paper and I'm sanding the bottom layer so I'm sanding the pumice gel as well as the metallic pieces that I've added and the pieces from the motherboard to give them a really distressed look. Now that was a good start to go for this dress look, but it wasn't extreme enough. So I'm going in with my pointy tool and I'm picking up some um, grains from the pumice gel so that the color that's underneath, which is the dark rich brown, can come to the top again. So I'm really distressing it by taking away some pieces, not all of it, so that I have the light color from the top and the dark color from the bottom playing together to create that very distressed and rusty look. This took me a lot of time, a lot of patience, but it was definitely worth it. So I'm playing with all tools that I can get my hands on. My pointy tool, my scratching tool, sanding paper, tweezers, whatever, um, whatever it takes to create that, that look that I have in mind. As you can see, I took away a lot of grains. The thing is not to take away too much so that you still have that lighter color on the top as well as the elements that you added. And then using matte accents, I'm just gluing down the final metallic pieces that I wanted to add and that were too heavy for the pumice gel to just stick in there. Voila! And now I can add it to my little suitcase. Now, there is still a gap between um, the base that I made and the edges of my suitcase and I want to fill that up. I want to make it look as if it was in there like forever. So I'm taking my leftover uh, pumice gel mixture and I'm filling up that little gap. This is a game of patience. You have to be um, very careful doing so if you don't want to add it all over the edges of the suitcase, but it's definitely worth it. 
And once that is done and dried, I'm giving it the same treatment as I did for the, the rest of the base. Going in with the flat shot lighter color, painting it all over. Again, a game of patience with a very fine uh, brush. And when that is dry, again I'm picking out some grains from the pumice stone to make the darker color underneath appear again. Now it all still looked too flat to my liking, so I added some flat patio and this is the Merci Beaucoup Mint color. I sprayed it all over, then heat set it and then added some more and then again heat set it. I'm creating some more splatters on the rest of the suitcase as it still looks too neat compared to the bottom that I've created. So I'm using the same colors that I used uh, before, the Time Travel Teal, um, Starburst and the Cattail Copper Brown that I diluted in water. For the inside of my suitcase I decided to go well with paper music as it's a music box. And this is a piece of Prima paper designed by Finovar. Once it has uh, the right dimension, I'm colorizing it with some distress ink and then scratching the edges to make it work with the rest of the suitcase. To give it the same color accents, I'm adding some uh, more of that Merci Beaucoup Mint Flat Fabio on the paper and then simply gluing it inside with tacky glue. Using that same piece of paper, I'm cutting a strip that I will use for the outside of the suitcase. And don't ask me what it says, because it's Polish. And I'm giving it the exact same treatment as I did for the paper inside. The stress ink, um, scratching the edges, the flat fabio, the exact same thing. For the inside of the suitcase, I decided I needed another red element to um, balance out the lever of the, the mechanical, of the music mechanical system. So I'm using a little ticket that I had laying around. I have no idea where it came from. And to dress it up and give it, uh, and give it an, an industrial look as the rest of the suitcase has, I'm just sticking for any tiny breads through it after I've stamped with the stress ink and my splattered mark stamp with stamp. I also sprayed some water to blend the stress ink around. And once my paper is completely dried again, I can stick those four um, breads through it. So they don't have any function, they don't hold it to anything. They're just there as decoration.
and then I'm gluing that little ticket in place using 3D foam. As you know by now, I uh, put a lot of attention in having all the elements work together, so these metallic breads didn't have the same look as the rest of the metal that I used uh, for the inside of the decoration. So I'm going back in with the same flat shots, first uh, with the light brown, and this color is called Café au lait, and then again with the blue, really adding the same accents as the rest of the suitcase has. I also want to add a system to um, keep the suitcase open and having the lid of the suitcase hang back just a little. So I'm thinking that a chain might do the job. So I need to make holes in the lid of the suitcase and the side of the suitcase. And that means that I will have to add some decorations to uh, the cover to cover it up. So first I'm placing my chain on the inside and I'm using just a bread to do so. And then making a hole on the side of the suitcase, I'll do the exact same thing there. Placing a bread, uh, a washer, and then opening uh, the bread on the outside of the suitcase. And that of course has to be um, dressed up as well. I don't want to have that bread just sticking out of the suitcase. So first I'm gluing my washer in place and now that's a bit of a fight to get that chain to the bread and then to the hole in the suitcase. To dress up, to dress up the cover of the suitcase I'm using a Finovar mechanical element. And I'm just cutting it in half using my uh, scissors and then gluing it in place. And that will cover up that little bread that is sticking through the cover of my suitcase. And then to add a finishing touch, I'm adding a little metallic element that I home rusted. Again, just gluing it in place. And then using a tiny mini uh, gear, I'm covering up the bread that sticks out of the side of the suitcase. And then again, using the flat shots, I'm giving it the same treatment so that all metallic pieces, even if they have been home rusted, have the same finishing touch to it. Then I'm applying a tiny bit of embossing ink on the outside of my suitcase and embossing powder. This is the Lindy Stem Gang. Um, Queen Sheba Silver, and that will allow me to add um, an industrial look to the outside of my suitcase as well, and to take away that cardboard look it has. And then just melting the powder. And I'm repeating the same steps on all sides of the suitcase until I'm happy with the look of it, until it looks crunchy, rusty, and metally. <laughs> And that's the final step for today's video, repeating it over and over on all sides. If you liked today's video, don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Both are very much appreciated. And see you back next time. Ta-da!